Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Tetrarch in the five minute pool on ICC. Tetrarch opens with d4, let's play d5 in reply. This guy's got a really high rating, 2613. Pretty sure I played him before. Playing my usual stuff, not experimenting in this game. Okay, so we have a exchange slav. Bishop f4 is the move. I'm going to keep it solid with e6 and look to play bishop d6. This does lock the bishop inside the chain, but I know this line to be acceptable for black. Is actually a preferred setup of Smyslavs. So it's good enough for me in a blitz game. I've had this position before. H takes G, I'll play H6. Sometimes black has to time their counterplay in the center and has to look for an opportunity to play like E5. Yeah, I've also had this before too. Queen D6. So black uh, is at some risk with the open H file. I had an over the board game against uh, international master Sean Nagel where he tried to make use of that. Here, I'll just play bishop d7, looking to move a rook over to c8. Kind of remains to be seen whether rook ac8 or rook fc8 should be preferred. Don't think I have to worry about knight to b5 at the moment. Yeah, white's just going to prepare b4 from the looks of it. I can play knight a5 right now. Knight a5, b4, knight c4, bishop takes c4, pawn takes. Hmm, not sure I want that, though. I could also play e5. Accepting a isolated pawn. Rook c8 looks standard, though. I think that's what I'll do. I'll play rook a c8. And then we'll come here. Look for white to play knight a4, trying to get into c5. I might make a strategic retreat of my bishop to e8. Just so that if the knight does come to c5, it won't be attacking that piece. Now, do I go for e5 sometime soon or no? Probably not, because e5 can be met by b5, trying to drive away the knight and then take that pawn. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to play this. Yeah, white's just waiting. What to do now? E5 again is going to be met by B5. So I'm not thrilled about that. Knight D7. Maybe Knight A4. Okay, I'm going to do Knight E7. Now my bishop is protecting that square. This does invite Knight E5, but I think I can make up for that. Uh, eventually I want to challenge this knight in the center. So let's play queen back to b8. This looks super defensive, but I feel good about my position for the most part. I think it's fundamentally sound. I want to go knight e7 and offer a trade. I didn't do it on the previous move because of knight b5. Okay, so knight d7, queen c2. I can even take on e5 then. Okay, so let's do this. There's also knight c6. No, but this is consistent with what we've been trying to do. If queen c2, I might play f5 and just block the queen bishop battery, but I kind of wonder if queen c2, knight takes e5 is playable. Okay, here, what if they have problems with these pawns? Hmm. No, I can't really get at them. All right, I'm going to do this and try to come into c4. I'm going to let this knight sit here for the moment. Possibly think about driving it away with f6. Okay, let's... Hmm. Yeah, better put a stop to the queen bishop battery. Bishop a4 is a threat. They sidestep that. Right, let's come here. Gotta watch that time, minute and a half down. Now I can perhaps double up. I feel like white hasn't made the inroads on the queen side that they would have liked to by now. In fact, they're probably not going to play on that wing at all. Still looking to double. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I think if I get rook dc8 in, pressure on this knight, I have faith in my position. I don't see any pawn breakthroughs white has, like e4 or g4. None of that appears to be good. Okay, so we'll do this. They offer a trade. I want to get this working somehow in the position. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to take... Let's play bishop b5. Activate the bishop, attack this. Pre-move this. There's only one open file, so naturally we're both trying to utilize it. Time's a bit of a concern. In an equal position like this, you don't want to burn too much time just deciding between equal options. And they might play queen c3. Okay, they do this instead. Let's get this knight going somewhere. So let's come here. Maybe knight c8 to d6 is what I'm thinking. Back this up. I'm gonna play knight d6. I could try it, I could have played pawn b5 right there, but I think I prefer it this way. I want to get my knight into c4 or e4 down the road. Don't see much in the way of counterplay for them. Let's come here. Maybe use the e4 square. Ooh, I see a cool idea. If they take with a bishop, I have queen takes c3. Ah, they saw it. Okay, so let's do this. Not sure that was a great move. It invites something coming into a4. Maybe I'll have bishop c2, queen takes c2, queen takes c3 somewhere. Okay, let's expand. I feel like I have good command of the position right now. I'm just waiting a bit. Let's come up here. This is not a threat. Okay. Um, let's do this. I'm going to take this way. And now come back here and try to put my queen on the long diagonal. G4. Look to play queen c6. Hmm, they're going to take their shot in the center. Makes sense. All right, I got to take that because I got to hurry. They kind of have a blockade at the moment. Check. Hmm. Threatening the knight. I'm going to make this breakthrough because i got to get this bishop working for me somehow. I want to go c3. Queen b7 maybe next move. Uh, let's come here. So my c-pawn, I have pressure on g2, but yeah, they're getting awfully close to my king. Huh. Not sure how this is going to work out, but we'll see. 20 seconds, i got to do something. Check. Let's come here. Time warning. Hmm. Let's come here. Centralize the queen. There's queen f8, though. Queen f8, I gotta go to g6. Check. Knight e5. Hmm. This is tricky. Knight e5, I have to play king h7. Don't think any other move is working. Check. This could be a Check. draw. Let's come here. My queen Check. is well placed. Check. Check. I'm going to try to Check. run. Check. Hmm. Knight back. 
Knight back, I have c2. Uh, let's come here. Check. 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 Whoa. He's playing for the win. Check. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Time scramble at the end. Uh, he gambled. Yeah, he played queen f7 and went for it. Uh, of course, the moves thereafter were completely ugly from both sides. <laughs> yeah, I was just pre-moving at the end. Yeah, he, he probably should have taken the draw, though, with that little time for each side and him having the check and therefore the initiative. I guess I can't fault him for playing for a win. But, hey, you gamble, sometimes you lose. So let's go and take a look at this one. So the exchange slav. Uh, a lot of times white just takes the pawn on move two, but here they delay the capture for a little bit. So take bishop f4. So here black has a variety of moves. Uh, bishop f5 is one of the main lines, just playing symmetrically. Knight h5 is sometimes played. a6 and also the move that I played, e6, are all possible. So e6. So in return for locking the bishop inside the chain, I do get to play bishop d6 quickly and challenge white's good bishop. That's kind of the hope of this line. I think black can normally equalize in this variation, although I will admit it's sometimes a little easier to play white's side of the board, as is common in the exchange slav. You know, in symmetric openings, the position uh, or the side moving first in the position usually has some small initiative, and the other side is trying to defuse it. So, yeah, as I was saying, I had a game against. International master Sean Nagel, who's a IM from my state, Minnesota. We played many times. We played many times in exchange slavs, and we had this position. Uh, it also went rook c1, queen d6, and I believe Nagel played bishop b1, preparing queen d3. And he left his king in the center, and he probably got a, a bit of an edge, although the game was later drawn. But in this game, Tetrarch just castles, and I think these next moves were pretty normal for both sides. I was a little surprised that white did not play knight a4, because when they put the pawns on d4 and b4, you would expect this knight maneuver to come at some point, because that knight is not doing a whole lot on c3, it wants to be improved, and knight a4 to c5 is like a standard maneuver in this line. I wonder if there was some reason why they didn't like that. Ah, knight takes d4, so that's a, a bit of a trick I have to remember in this line. So yeah, after b4, rook fd8, if knight a4, black has this nifty move, take opening up bishop takes a4, and also attacking the rook on c1. So white's queen is overloaded. Yeah, in the event of, let's say, pawn or knight takes d4, we take c1, deflect the white queen, and then take on a4. Black has won a pawn, clean. And also if rook takes c8, then black has the in-between move knight takes f3 check. Check. Force white to recapture somehow and then take, and your black's doing excellently. So I got to remember that trick. I wasn't aware of that during the game, but um, when people tell you that blitz games aren't useful, you can point to examples like this. Like, this is something that otherwise I might not have known in this line, but now I will. So queen b4, I played bishop e8, just dropping this back. So I want to play bishop e8 now that my rook is no longer standing on f8. If it was still there, I'd be walling in that rook, so better to do it here. Or here. I guess this might work now, because now knight takes d4 is not winning a pawn. It's actually just a huge blunder for black. After take, rook takes, white's queen is not needed to protect the rook, so they can just recapture and keep the queen on a4. So white played rook fd1. I played knight e7, knight here. The computer says I should just go back and challenge the knight on e5. Instead, I played queen b8. Passive, but I felt like I could leave this knight here for now, and I have a position that is relatively free of weaknesses, and I think I should be able to wiggle out of this, even if the computer likes white a bit more. So bishop b1, I played knight d7, f4. I thought this was a mistake at first because it weakens 
g3 and e3, but then I realized that if knight f5 trying to attack both those pawns, they can just play bishop takes f5, so so much for that idea. So I played knight b6. This just seemed right, maneuvering for the c4 square. Here, I played f5. So if white's not careful, I can play bishop to a4, skewering the queen to the rook, because knight takes a4 would not be possible. Rook takes c2. But Tetrarch sidestepped that with queen e2. I played knight into c4. Here the engine likes rook c7, just preparing to double. Yeah, maybe I can wait to play the knight into c4. It might not be necessary to jump in immediately. Knight c4, take. I took with a rook. Bishop a2, rook c6. I felt good about my position. It felt like the tide was turning in my favor now. I don't think white has really proven anything over the past 5-10 moves. And, uh, you know, I'm well coordinated too. And I have both my rooks doubled on the c file. So there is reason to believe that black might be better after all is said and done. So here I took. Only problem was the clock. The white had almost a 2-1 to one time advantage. I'm Check. sure I didn't play as accurately as I could going forward. I want to show you that cool tactic that was possible. Here I feel like I'm kind of taking over the position because I've got my bishop in. White avoided the trade of bishops because I would get my queen in. And maybe I can maneuver this knight as in the game. Try to get it working towards e4 or b5 or maybe c4. I think the fact that white can't challenge the c-file so easily also contributes to black's advantage. Queen c6, bishop c2. Yeah, now I want to improve this knight. b5 was possible here, but I didn't want to cut off my bishop's retreat. And maybe I want to do something on the queen side. Maybe I don't want it closed down. So I avoided playing b5 for now. Yeah, now bishop d3. So now that I've improved my minor pieces, I want my queen to be functioning on the c-file. Yeah, so right here, Tetrarch avoided a uh, neat tactic. So I was hoping they would take on e4 with the bishop so that I could hit them with this move, queen takes c3. In between move, not recapturing, but compelling white to recapture and then sure. take. And we forked the king and the queen. Black's going to be up a piece, totally winning. So... That would have been a nice one to get in, especially in a blitz game, but I, I assume they saw that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so close with queen takes c3. So they retreated. White could take on e4 with the knight, by the way, but the thing about that is I would probably take with one of my pawns. I would bet the e-pawn. And yeah, the computer still likes black a little bit. I think this bishop will be a defensive piece. Maybe this isn't so bad for white because the bishop is controlling some key squares, but... White is very much on the defensive. Maybe I play b5 and try to put the knight in on c4, and should white take it, take back with a pawn, and I'll have a protected pass pawn. Bishop e2, a6. Here I did go for b5. thought maybe somewhere white might try a4 in a bid to get counterplay on the queen side, but for the moment they just stayed still while I was pushing my pawns. This is a common uh, technique you see when one side has a space advantage. They'll try to play on all the wings. They'll play on every area of the board. So by playing my queenside pawns forward, I've gained a little space here. I have a good bishop anchored in the center. I can still push g5, though, and gain more space. And since I don't see a clear way to proceed, the c-file is not yielding me anything yet, I thought that would be fine. Just play g5. It does some damage to the king, but if I'm able to handle the position well enough, I don't think that should be a big deal. So here, I avoided a trade. One possibility that was there as well was uh, something like bishop c2 or bishop b1. Like this move could be tried. And it's that same tactic as earlier. If white plays queen takes c2, I can take here. And after the queen swap, Check. hope for a better endgame. This is a nice endgame to play for black because I've got all these pawns on light squares. White's bishop is ineffective, and my knight can jump around and hopefully create threats. So I thought about doing that, but I didn't do it because white is not forced to recapture. Maybe they can play something like, I don't know, king e1. Uh, and also, I wanted to keep a compact position as my time was ticking down. I didn't want to leave any loose pieces and have to worry about them when I was under a minute. So g5, 
queen c1. But in doing so, I might have passed up some better opportunities. So take, I took with the d pawn. So now we have bishop versus knight, and I have this protected passed pawn. Here, I drop my bishop back. And I think they play d5 at an opportune time. I'm not sure about this move, g4. I'm not sure I should close the position. I was a little worried white would play queen h5 or take and then play queen h5 and try to attack the g5 pawn, but the computer says don't worry about that, just play your king up. But I closed it and then they struck in the center with d5. I took it a pawn, check. queen d4 check, king here, but I had king issues the rest of the game. And this is scary when you know, your opponent has a minute more than you. I'm up a pawn, but Check. I constantly have to be on the lookout for white coordinating the queen and the knight. Yeah, d4 was just an instinctive move to try to activate my bishop before white plays knight d4 and blockades the position. Because if they get that knight on d4, I won't be able to advance the d5 pawn, and if my bishop's still sitting on this diagonal, it's, it's not getting in the game. And I'm up one pawn, and my d pawn should be relatively meaningless. My c pawn is the more important pawn, so that's why I played this clearance move d4. Yeah, here I'm sure a bunch of mistake, mistakes will start creeping in. Like, the computer prefers E takes D4 for white, and it says white's a little bit better. I did this. This was a nice square to get my bishop to, defending and also potentially helping out. But I had to I had to dodge some scary stuff. Here I should just push the pawn. I played queen B7. Yeah, like, the queen and the knight are a deadly attacking force. And with those two pieces circling my king and my bishop unable to help out in the defense, I was I was sweating bullets here. C3, check. check. I think I did a good job of sidestepping the threats, though. Okay, so that was a losing move. Queen to d5. I should push the pawn instead. Yeah. When you're in time pressure and you're getting attacked, your natural instinct is to try to group your pieces in, in a defensive pose. So that's what I was trying to do with queen d5 to at least give me the option of queen f7 somewhere, but the computer says just play c2 and even though white has checks, none of them are fatal. Check. Like if here, king h7, check, check king here, and yeah, I guess white can never get the knight fully participating in the attack with decisive effect. And there's knight f6, check. but I'll dance away to g6. Hmm. Yeah, that's a tough move to make though, with time pressure. So I played queen d5, and where was the Check. win? Queen f8, that's what white did. King here. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I can't play king h7 now because check. of check with the fork, and I lose. So the king must go forward. King g6. Check. Now they did this. So queen f6 check. was winning. Huh. So if king h7, queen e7. Check. Can't go to g8 because of knight f6. If here, knight f8. Check. Ah, and then queen h4 checkmate. Checkmate. That's nice. And the knight takes away the flight square. So queen e7, I can't go to g6 or g8. And if king h8, there's knight f6. Attacking the queen and also threatening queen f8. Wow. And I have no answer to that. Yeah, that, that's a, a nice example of how the queen and knight co can coordinate in an attack. They complement each other so well. So white had a winning line. They just couldn't figure it out. They were getting pretty low on time at this point as well. Check. So they played knight e5. Have to go back with the king. Yeah, if king h5, there's queen e8. Check. And again, I'm getting mated. So king h7, check. queen e7, check. Check. Yeah, and it feels like the game should be drawn now. I mean, check. I can't escape the perpetual. Check. But I think the c-pawn makes up for... Unless they can somehow... Check me in a way that will also allow them to go back and win that C pawn. Check. Yeah, White just really check. wanted to win this game. I was trying to escape the checks, and yeah, like this, this didn't do anything for White checking and then pulling the knight back to e5. But yeah, we were even on time here. Eight seconds to eight seconds. That's all it comes down to. <laughs> I played bishop d3 for who knows what reason. I think I was trying to play bishop c4 and like interfere with White's queen. That was my thought process with eight seconds on my clock. Check. Clearly I missed that queen d1 check, king h2, c1 queen was winning. Check. 
And amazingly, white has no good checks after that. I guess they can check on b8 or f7, but with two queens helping to defend down these files, I should be winning, as the computer indicates. Check. Check. Yeah, and now Check. it was an all-out time scramble. Check. Check. They played Check. for the win, but came up short. Some pretty hilarious moves in the final minutes. How many how many times can John hang his queen? <laughs> but hey, I won the game, so. Fascinating game. I liked my play in the middle game. I think I got the better of him in the middle game and we started maneuvering. Probably White needs to do better a better job of finding a plan maybe around about here. Because they played for f4, propping up the knight on e5, but this didn't amount to anything. And the end game was pretty close. I had an edge, but when white got in d5, that's when uh, things got really dicey for me, especially in regards to my king safety. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.